Here's another important video from the Personal Defense Network. Now, the human weapon system has been around for a long time. In fact, the current version we have has evolved over eons to be what it is today because of what worked. Certain things worked, certain things didn't. What we want to do is help our natural human weapon system to work as efficiently as possible. And I know that while you don't teach combative fitness, you can explain combative fitness and explain how we can use some very simple tools, some very simple concepts to help ourselves become more efficient and stronger for the fight. That's true. We, and we have been doing that for some time. And we've been helping show people why the principles of what they're using and, and the things that they're doing, why those things work and how to do them even more efficiently and apply and help apply them uh, to uh, combative arts, so to speak. When we talk about integrating with our tools, whether it's a firearm, a knife, or a stick, we have to be able to do that efficiently, and we have to have the right muscular development to be able to capitalize on our potential to use them efficiently to defend ourselves. Talk to me about the specific moves that you recommend or that friends of ours like Jeff Martone, things he's developed, which, which are just incredible in terms of efficient combative fitness and functional fitness development. Guys like the CrossFit guys who are really doing things with functional fitness. All very simple moves, simple concepts, but I want you as, as the doctor to break sure. them down for us and explain it. One of the things that, the, that all of these moves uh, use is the, it's the integration of a sense of where you are, proprioception, touch and feel, which are, which are critical elements to uh, the upper level capability in combatives. Uh, likewise, what, what CrossFit uh, does and what uh, Jeff Martone has developed is a series of exercises that biomechanically fit into, uh, into utilizing the tools in a combative environment. And of course, it's important to remember that Direct Action Medical Network is not just a bunch of guys sitting around in a classroom talking about these things. You guys actually go out and perform the tactical skills that we're talking about developing, and you're ready to train people and help people understand how to train to do it themselves. So I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to let you demonstrate some of the concepts with some of the simple tools you have, some of these training techniques for combative fitness, and explain to our viewers why they're important and how they work. Okay, thanks. Let's go back a few minutes. Uh, let's go back to some concepts that we've that we've talked about in um, in previous sessions. One is the complexity of the system. We've, we've talked about how the neuroanatomy interacts with the musculoskeletal system, and we've talked about the the need to be efficient and the need to coordinate uh, all of these skills and to wrap all of these things together so that we can make not only the training of the human weapon system efficient, but we can make its performance the way it needs to be. We talked about vision, we've talked about airway, we've talked about moving into extension, and we've also talked about mobility. We're going to combine those things in a series of, of active motions and, uh, and then we're going to show you how they apply in a combative environment. One of the things that's important also in, in review is to talk about the hands. The hands are, are miraculous uh, organs in and of themselves. They are uh, wired separately and redundantly. They have a blood supply that's redundant. And for all the attention that they get all day long, it's always been interesting to those of us who sit around and, and talk about these things and who apply these, princi these principles of biomechanics and physiology to the fact that actually there's very little that is done in uh, the everyday gym that trains the hands themselves. You know, there's 19 different muscles in the hands and hands have to be trained uh, in a focused kind of way to become maximally effective. So Jeff Martone at TacticalAthlete.com has utilized kettlebells into a fitness, uh, into a combative fitness uh, program that is, really makes biomechanical and physiological sense. What we're going to do today is we're going to, uh, with Steve's help, we're going to uh, demonstrate how to do a tactical get-up, or it's also called a Turkish get-up. Steve is one of the uh, owners here um, at Memorial Shooting Center. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get one of these kettlebells and we're going to emphasize uh, the, the methodology and the, and the specifics of how to do this lift. So Steve, if you want to lay down, yeah, that's good, just like that. Uh, slide back just a little bit. Good. Now what we're going to do is you're going to reach, reach back and pick this up with your right hand, okay? You get that right there, just like that, all right? And you're going to take your left hand and place it on the bottom of that kettlebell, all right? And you just lift it, 
and hold it just like that, all right? Now place this hand back down to the side and hold it just like that, okay? You got it? Bend this knee, all right, and place that flat on the ground. Now what I want you to do is press with this kettlebell, go straight up to the ceiling. Keep your eye on it and keep it balanced. Do everything slow. Take this arm, put it at a 90 degree angle, and put your hand flat and spread your hand out. And what I want you to do is I want you to sit up, okay? So here we go. We're going to sit up, keeping the kettlebell straight, just like that, okay? Keep your right knee bent up under you with your, right, with your left hand out, out to the side. And what you're going to do is you're going to swing this foot underneath and back and set it behind you, okay? So here we go, all right? Just like that. Keep going. Keep going. Just natural as can be. Straight up. Good. Just like that. All the way up. Okay, and now we're going to reverse that process. So you're going to bend your left knee all the way down. Place your hand, left hand out to the side. Swing your left foot through, all the way through. Good. And lay back down. And take your left hand and put it on the kettlebell. Good. And lower it down and set it back down on the ground. Good. Okay, so what we've seen is we've seen him move uh, that weight into extension He's utilized his shoulder muscles, the back of his arms. He's utilized all of his hand muscles in holding, that, in holding that kettlebell close to him. Then he's pressed it forward, gripping it and balancing it. And then he's pulled this leg up and he's rotated and pushed uh, into a sitting position so that he winds up all, standing all the way up. Let's do it one time without the kettlebell and go through it step by step. So all the way back down. So we'll pick up our imaginary kettlebell, good. Bring our left hand over and assist us so that we're sitting right, so that we're sitting right here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to bend the right leg, okay, and we're going to press the kettlebell straight up, just like that. And then we're going to set up keeping this right leg bent, okay, supporting our weight with this left hand, spreading it out, then taking the left foot and swinging it through, stop right there. Okay, and coming to an upright position right here, keeping the kettlebell straight up and keeping your eyes on the kettlebell and then standing up, just like that. Now, what we've done is we've worked all of the muscles all the way down the leg, the, the latissimus dorsi, the um, quadratus lumborum, the glutes, the semimembranosus tendinosus, the extensors of the, of the leg, the gastrocs, the calves, all the way down to the stability in the foot. Okay, now we're going to reverse. He brings his left leg back, all the way down, drops his left hand down to the ground, swings through, and lays all the way down in a controlled fashion, taking his left hand, assisting with the bell, and setting it back down. That one workout uh, basically works all the muscles. You can get up. <laughs> uh, works all the muscles and utilizes uh, proprioception, balance, uh, moving from flexion into extension against resistance. And one sure. of the great things about this exercise is that it integrates perfectly with our training from unorthodox shooting positions and our training to get up if we've been put down on the ground with a firearm. Why don't you go ahead and walk me through exactly the same steps you walked Steve through, but I'm going to start in a position that actually comes from being grounded and having shot. So here I am down on the ground, maybe I've shot, I've been in the ready position, just exactly where that kettlebell was, exactly the same exercise. Now I'm in this ready position and go ahead and walk me through the steps of the exercise, Doc. Okay, so what you're going to do in this type of situation is you're going to extend the hand out to the left and as you do so you're going to raise up and bend at the waist with the right foot planted and bringing the left foot through keeping your eyes on the target, going to a standing position, and you're ready to fight. Okay? Great exercise, great integration to integrating with the firearm or just working out with the kettlebell. Something you can obviously do even without the kettlebell just to get the motions right. Excellent exercise, Doc. Thank you. One of the other tools that we use is called a D-ball. Uh, Jeff Martone has developed some exercises with this that are really useful. The uh, 
one of the things that a D ball does is it builds strength in the hands with proprioception, a sense of where those hands are, and touch. And so Steve's going to work work with the D ball uh, today. And what we're going to start with is just a simple exercise of tossing the ball back and forth. And what you want to do is you always want to have your hands and your elbows and your arms where you're going to be fighting. So you want this to be a back and forth type of catch and move. Now, if, if you study what he's actually doing is he's stabilizing himself on his offside when he catches that ball. And so he's stabilizing his whole axial uh, musculature and, he, and he's stabilizing himself. He's keeping his elbows in tight and he's bouncing that ball back and forth. And to make it a challenge, he speeds up. And go, so going back and forth stabilizes it. Watch Steve, he's holding his breath because he's exerting himself. And so now we're talking about the respiration system and we're talking about breathing and moving and breathing. Okay, one of the things t that also happens that we talked about in an earlier segment, segment is protecting your command and control, protecting your vision, and protecting your, your airway. Uh, there, in a fight, humans tend to curl up and they tend to ball up and they protect and they move their forearms to protect their head and their face and their vision and but there's no exercise that really that really teaches that and, and, and makes those muscles that do that that makes them strong uh, one of the exercises that we do uh, builds that strength and so what we're going to have Steve do is take the ball in his right hand and pass it behind his head and catch it with his other hand now there's a tendency, so do that a couple of times. So he's passing the, passing the ball behind his head. Now there's a tendency to bring your elbows far out, but to make this a challenge, what we're going to do is we're going to get him to hold his elbows in and pass that ball around. It's a big difference, huh? Yes. Yeah, big difference. And you'll notice that what he's doing is he's providing, once again, that axial stability by tightening his abs and tightening his legs and pushing down into the floor. And when he does that, he gains strength in his arms. Do you feel the difference? If you push him down with your toes as you're doing that, it makes that easier, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. The, the other thing that we're going to want him to do also is keep his head up. So we can make this a challenge by keeping his head up and keeping his elbows close. When we do those things, that makes it a real challenge. But it's also building endurance in muscles that we don't usually work out. You can't go to the gym to, build, to pick an exercise in order to protect yourself in fighting. That's good. Thanks. So these are just a few things that you can do to make yourself a better combatant. And when we talk about combatives, we want to talk about the application of that exercise. So, Steve, if you'll stay in here for a second and, and just get into that position you were in as you were getting ready to pass that ball. Pretend you were passing the ball with the right hand and you were going to pass it back um, now with the left hand instead. Move with the left hand. Exactly. When you do that, put that ball all the way back behind your head. And what does that look like? It looks just like that vertical elbow strike that we learned to do in our personal defense readiness video. When we think about someone being in very close, someone coming in to attack, maybe there's a, a grabbing going on or maybe even a hug. Someone's coming in. If I reach up just like that, if I reach up with that exact same motion that I was passing that kettleball back with, passing the kettleball back over here, again, in a crouched fighting position, boom, that applies to our vertical elbow strike. You know, finding out why these exercises are important, why these exercises work, what muscle groups they enhance and what abilities in a combative sense they enhance is really important. Make sure you ask the why questions when it comes to any exercise you're going to learn. Why am I learning this? How does it apply to my fight? How does it make me safer? How does it make me stronger? What we've seen here is how combative fitness integrates into a combative environment. How with efficiency and knowledge about the biomechanics and the physiology of the system, how we can um, make our training more valuable, we can make it more useful, and in the end, we can make it more usable. Check out more videos just like this one at the Personal Defense Network.